Soap debuted on ABC on September 13, 1977. But before the show had even hit the airwaves, there were six months of protests and public outcry leading to its premiere. Earlier that year, in March, network execs at the 195 ABC affiliate stations across the U.S. screened the show's pilot, and many of them were horrified by what they saw. The show's heavy emphasis on themes of sex and adultery resulted in a bit of a moral panic. As a result, it almost failed to launch, as religious groups made it their mission to actively campaign against it. Besides sex and cheating, conservative viewers were taken aback by how the show presented subjects like homosexuality. Today, these themes are no big deal, but back in those days, they were still considered taboo. ABC refused to back down. They were determined to let the show go on, no matter what. In fact, they even reduced sponsor fees from $75,000 a spot to just forty grand to sweeten the deal. You know what they say, all publicity is good publicity. Well, in Soap's case, the controversy only created more hype for this series. When it premiered, it won its time slot and ranked number 13 in the Nielsen ratings for its first season. Despite being met with mixed reviews, Soap, which was essentially a parody of daytime soap operas, aired for four seasons before wrapping up in 1981. Join Facts First as we take a look at a few of the controversies that inevitably took Soap off the air. Critics were split and the controversy never died down. After Soap's premiere, ABC received thousands of angry phone calls demanding the show be pulled. Even so, they claimed they had received far more calls in favor of it staying on the air. According to a poll conducted by the University of Richmond, 74% of viewers failed to find the show offensive. Most intriguing is the fact that among those who did find it offensive, more than half said they were still planning to watch it again. Soap's first round of critical reviews were fairly mixed. The LA Times noted it seemed like the show was just one long, drawn-out, dirty joke, and that it lacked subtlety, class, and cleverness. Variety, likewise, found the show to be predictable and silly, while noting it was no more outrageous than the average daytime soap. It was a solid parody. Soap was a parody of the popular daytime soap opera genre. In fact, three of its cast members had previously starred in serious soaps. Arthur H. Peterson Jr. had appeared on both the radio incarnations of General Hospital and Guiding Light. Robert Mandon similarly had been a member of the Search for Tomorrow cast, and Donnelly Rhodes had a role on the iconic soap The Young and the Restless. Soap garnered a reputation for featuring various outrageous and absurd plotlines, effectively parodying the run-of-the-mill melodramas that got high viewership during the 70s. Everything from alien abduction, amnesia, dangerous cults, mobsters, communist revolutions, and demonic possession were featured. And if you've ever seen a serious daytime soap, you know presentation of such themes are fairly commonplace. Before we tell you more about soap, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Soap's Plot in a Nutshell the pilot of Soap began with the announcer stating the show was the story of two sisters, Mary Campbell and Jessica Tate. Tate, played by Catherine Helmont, and her husband Chester, played by Robert Mandon, both engaged in infidelity, and their affairs and romantic flings expectedly led to a variety of conflicts, mishaps, and scandals. Jessica Tate refused to believe the stories of her husband's cheating ways until she witnessed them firsthand. The couple's hoity-toity butler Benson, played by Robert Guillaume, was a sarcastic man who loathed Chester but got along well with various other members of the Tate family. His character ended up being so popular he got his own spin-off series Benson, which ran longer than Soap did. The Campbells were far less well-off than the wealthy Tates. Their son, Danny Dallas, played by Ted Wass, was on his way to becoming a gangster when he was instructed to murder his stepfather. He went on the run, clothing himself in a handful of humorous disguises in the process. His older brother Jody, played by Billy Crystal, was a gay man on the fence about whether or not he wanted to undergo sex reassignment surgery. He was also clandestinely having a spicy love affair with a pro football quarterback. Crystal's Jody Dallas was notable for being one of the first recurring LGBT characters on a sitcom. His affair with the football player and contemplation of having sexual affirmation surgery not only upset religious conservative groups, but also created some outcry in the gay community as many LGBT viewers were concerned that the character's portrayal merely perpetuated stereotypes. The gay community especially took offense to Dallas's intention to have a sex change. One of the biggest LGBT groups to weigh in on the matter was the National Gay Task Force. In time, Dallas's character was toned down a bit. Network censors voiced their concerns. 
Due to its perceived raunchiness, ABC censors were heavily concerned with the show's content. The LA Times printed a leaked internal report just three months before the series' debut, infamously dubbed The Soap Memo, that dealt with the show's substitution of Oreo cookies for the traditional communion wafer. This move was viewed as sacrilegious and offensive to religious viewers. Similarly, a scene that some felt implied a priest being seduced in a confessional also came under fire and resulted in a fierce letter-writing campaign by family and religious groups calling for the show's cancellation. In time, however, the controversy began to subside, even though the show eventually covered touchy topics like rape, student-teacher sex, and impotence. ABC abruptly dropped Soap at the Season 4 cliffhanger. Soap was created by Susan Harris at a time when a female showrunner was practically unheard of. ABC had initially agreed to the show airing for five seasons, leading Harris to develop a plot outline for the entire series. But the ongoing and relentless protests eventually led to the network's decision to pull the plug. This happened at the end of the fourth season, right after Jessica Tate was apparently shot by a communist firing squad. Audiences were never given clear answers to whether or not she had been killed. Several other cliffhangers were left forever unresolved. Chester, who was suicidal, had been planning to kill his wife Annie and his nephew Danny after catching them sleeping together. Jody had become permanently hypnotized and believed herself to be a nonagenarian Jewish man. Bert was also getting ready to walk into an ambush planned by his political enemies. The official reason ABC said they canceled the show was declining ratings, but according to insights provided by the Museum of Broadcast Communications, the program actually ended because Sponsored had threatened to pull out due to its controversial content. The theory is supported by the fact that sponsor Vlasic Foods pulled its sponsorship immediately after the show aired its season 4 finale. Even though we never got to see what happened to Jessica on Soap, a 1983 episode of Benson did mention Jessica's disappearance while noting the Tate family was trying to have her declared legally deceased. Later in the episode, an apparition of Jessica appeared to Benson while revealing she wasn't really dead, but rather she was in a coma somewhere in South America. While that gave viewers at least a partial answer to Jessica's fate, none of the other soap finale cliffhangers were ever mentioned. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of soap? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.